great, I get to start all over again because my alarm went off. Okay, I saw this thing on Facebook which prompted a an ASBE vlog, which I haven't done in a while, apologies. Um, I was talking about getting away from the world for a while to sort of find our center. Um, because we have a lot of information coming at us all the time. It doesn't seem like a lot of information to most people, but we are hypersensitive. I hear more than most people. I smell more than most people. Um, I don't see them more, more than most people, but I am more sensitive to bright lights. So if someone is taking a picture with a flash, it will momentarily distract my brain and it'll go, we should check that out. Meanwhile, while it's looking over there to see what the flash was, it may have missed a word coming in over this side. Um, and if we're having lunch together, I taste more than most people taste. I am a super taster. So I may be distracted by a bit of cilantro, which I am genetically engineered to think tastes like soap. And because that little bit of cilantro distracted me, my brain may not hear that there was the word don't or not in that sentence. So it's not that we autistic people, and I'm generalizing, forgive me for this, I, I'm, I'm speaking from my own, my own space. So let's, let's just go with that. I, I do wear glasses by the way, but they kept reflecting the light and it was distracting me. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The light reflecting off of my glasses distracted me so much, I had to take them off for this video. It's not that we're not listening to you. It could be we smelled something interesting. And even though we wanted to listen to you, our brain went, hey, what was that? Was that coffee? I haven't had coffee today. <laughs> Anybody who knows me, um, yeah, land of coffee. I have the mug that goes with this that says land of coffee and some lakes. Um, so it's not that we're not listening. Um, the flow of information into our brains, the language processing center of my brain is slow. I don't know if that's all of us, but for me, it's slow. Doesn't matter if I'm speaking sign language or Spanish or English. Any language. Can't sign today, see? Any language that I hear, or hear, is slow going in the brain. That's a sign for think, but whatever. I have a deaf friend who gets frustrated with me. He thinks it just, I just need practice and then I'll be able to sign as fast as he does. Not fast because my brain hole is slow with language any language so like he'll be signing at me and I know all the signs that he's using but because he's going so fast I'm missing signs so he might he might say you are missing one word in sign language Woo, that's bigger than spoken English let me tell you or if you get distracted and he says understand now this is a sign for understand, but you have to watch the face, which is hard for someone who's autistic. So it could be, I understand. Do you understand? I don't understand. So if you're not paying attention, if your brain has gotten distracted by coffee, you've lost something. And in sign language, there are words they just don't use. So you really have to pay attention to every sign or you, you get a completely different sentence than what they said. And in spoken, in the spoken language, it's the same way, you know, um, could be, <laughs> they said, do you want to go here? And I may have heard, you want to go there. And I may say, all right, cool, I'll wait here for you. 
because I didn't know you were asking me if I wanted to go. This has caused many, 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 many difficulties throughout my life. Can you imagine being a parent of an autistic child? And you think we're not listening. We, we are. It's just we're not getting all the information that we need. It's not information in. It's not a straight line. It's information in. It's, it's like a dotted line. We're, it's m missing pieces. We're not getting the information we need. It's not that we don't care. It's not that we're not listening. Speaking of not caring, okay. We, we aren't emotionless. We aren't robots. To the, on the contrary, a lot of us are what people would call an empath. If you're mad, even if you're not yelling yet, my ears will start ringing. Even if I haven't figured out yet that you're mad, my ears will start to ring. And I, it, it's, it's a warning sign. Um, and I know to look. And I see, you know, if you're autistic, here's the thing. They will, their, their shoulders will be tense. Their jaw might be set. Might have the pursed lips. And the brows might be. But sometimes the only warning that you have that somebody's mad is the pursed lips. Just, just, that's all the warning you have. It's a fair warning. It is difficult sometimes. And, I, and even in myself, not just other people, I'm not good with figuring out what emotion is what. I once misunderstood shame as anger. Fortunately, I went to a program where I have like this list of like, it's like a symptom tracker, you know? Like, okay, I think I'm mad, but I don't know why I'm mad. Couldn't figure out why I was mad. So I went through the list and I'm like, okay, it's not quite fitting for mad. Then go to the next one. And eventually I got to shame and I went, yeah, uh-huh, yep, it, okay. Turns out I felt shame because I had shared something in group and nobody commented, good, bad, or otherwise. So I felt unvalidated. It felt like I had just thrown this big heavy ball into open space and nobody caught it and it just hit the ground. So I felt ashamed. So it's not just you. We don't know how to interpret our own feelings either. We're, I am not going to say how old I am, but I'm old enough that I should know how emotions work in here and out there. But I don't. I don't know, man. I know nothing. Well, I can't say I know nothing, but I'm sorry. See, this is what I'm talking about. I felt a hair on my arm and now I'm distracted until I find it and remove it. We are easily distracted. I have very sensitive skin and I'm German enough to be hairy. So I, I feel like the hairs are meant to be a sensory organ. I feel things that maybe other people wouldn't notice. I see people with hair hanging off them all the time. They don't seem to notice, you know, but I do because I'm super sensitive. Ooh! Damn it, cat. Hang on. Sorry, pause for cat intervention. So you can see him. That's kind of funny. Um, so we are easily distracted. We don't get the information that we need. And as for emotions, we're not good with those. Um, and it's not that we don't care. Sometimes it's that we don't understand the emotion that's coming out of you. Like, oh, from the movie Home, what is the meaning of your face? We do it. You know, I was watching Supernatural and I had to stop the episode and call my sister, who's the one who got me into Supernatural, and go, hey, I don't understand the face that Sam is making. Can you break it down for me? And she did. I won't get into it because it would be spoilers if you don't watch the show. But the point is, I didn't understand it. So I had to go and ask somebody. Um, and if you are upset 
and we look away, it is not because we don't care. It's because we do care. We care too much. Okay. Any Anybody who, who who's a pentaholic who has seen On My Way Home, the documentary, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. I bought it because outtakes. But, and I'm a patron, but, and I have, you know, tattoos for them, you know, well, not for them, but, you know, with, like, lyrics and stuff. So I'm watching On My Way Home. This, at this point, I had it on Netflix because I haven't bought it yet. And if you've seen the documentary, you know what's coming. And I'm talking about people that are sad. Because Avi, the bassist, uh, the only one that ha really has a beard. Scott's scruff doesn't count. I'm <laughs> sorry. Well, Kevin kind of has a beard going. Anyway. Brunette. Beard. His allies. That guy. He's talking about all the things that he's had to sacrifice to, for his career. And if you're autistic and you don't know the warning signs, here's, here's the thing. They'll get red here and this isn't always everybody's different but they'll start to get red or pink around their eyes some people get blotchy because they're holding in the tears they don't want to cry but it's coming that's your warning sign they will get red around the eyes and maybe blotchy here i'm an ugly ugly crier man my whole face gets blotchy you know it's actually because i'm feeling a tense emotion and if it's a little warm in here you can kind of see a little bit the blotchies Kind of in here, and in, in, in here, and bleh. Anyway, I don't like to cry. I, I, I've had enough crap in my childhood. I want to laugh. Not all the time. That'd be exhausting. But I, I want, you know, positive vibes. So I kind of tend to avoid people that are sad. Another key that they're about to cry is there's a little catch in the voice. Like there is something stuck in their throat and not the kind you cough to remove but it's like their voice breaks you you can you can kind of hear it if you if you so if you're autistic and you don't know if somebody's sad that's those are your cues sometimes their shoulders will be slumped sometimes they're tense because they're holding in the tears you don't know i don't know but these are the things that I've observed, is they get redder on the eyes, blotchy, catch in the voice, the posture, I'm not good with posture, but it, it changes. Um, so, he's talking about the things that he's missed, and the eyes start to get red, and I'm like, no, do not cry, because then I'm going to cry. And then... There's a little catch in the voice. I lost it. That little catch in the voice. I lost it. Tears running down my face. Blotchy as sin. Oh my gosh, I lost it. And then the eyes get all shimmery and I'm like, no, no. I, I just, I was gone. And this is, this is why we, we sort of limit the input that's coming in. Because we will get overwhelmed so fast. We don't know what to do with all of that information. Because not only are we dealing with with your emotions, but we're dealing with our emotions reacting to your emotions. We, <laughs> you just dumped us into a lifeboat out in the middle of a stormy sea. And we have no oars. We're like, what the hell do I do now? How do I calm down? Because even after you've calmed down, we, we don't, we're not good at self-soothing. You know, I've been through a lot of therapy and I have an, I, I just graduated from ARMS. I've been, I've been through some programs and I'm kind of okay with self-soothing. This will bring me to tablets and phones and books and drawings and whatever we are looking at that's not you. We are bombarded by information all the time. I'm a super taster, so if I'm eating and I get a stray fleck of pepper, I may be distracted and miss a word. Hang on. So that siren would have derailed anything I was going to say, but that siren 
would have distracted you. Something as small as a hair on my arm or a fleck of pepper in my food or the smell of coffee if I haven't had it yet or a bright light in the corner of my peripheral is just as distracting as that siren was for you in the audience if you're not autistic. Does that make sense now? You see why it's so hard to hold a conversation with us. We are, we're bombarded by things you wouldn't even notice. You do, a lot of people don't see any of the things that we see. They don't hear what we hear. They don't smell what we smell. Or if they do, their brain skips over it. Unfortunately, for us, the brain's priority is different. It prioritizes the senses first. It, it throws that in our face. Hey, new smell! Analyze now! Pepper! Analyze now! And conversation, which is what we wanted to focus on, <coughs> gets pushed to the back. Just like for you, the pepper or the coffee or the flash of light would have been pushed to the back of your brain. I'm sorry, we don't mean to offend you. It's just the way we're wired. We can't help it, I'm sorry. So with the tablet we or the phone, we are limiting the amount of input that's coming in. We're focusing on, we're, we still hear you. Well, most of us. Some autistic people will just zone in on whatever they're doing and tune everything else out. So don't, don't, don't quote me because there are different, every, every autistic person is different just like every regular person. No, I didn't say normal. I did not say normal because autism is a different kind of normal. Mainstream, there we go. Mainstream people are different. Autistic people are different. It's a spectrum, but even people that are on the same end of the spectrum are still going to be very different. Well, that would be, uh, very different. Anyway, <clears throat> see, I get distracted by the fact that my sign language was imperfect and I had a hair down my back, so I had to fix it. Anyway, so either they are zoned in on that tablet and they don't hear a word you're saying because they're blocking everything else, else out to find themselves again. Because we will get lost. We will get so lost. If I go to Florida and I go to BBL without meaning to, m my voice turns a little Hispanic. If I'm in North Carolina without meaning to, I start to drawl, y'all, and I don't notice I'm doing it. I watched two men and a little lady, or three men and a little lady, one too many times, and I started speaking with a British accent. We will lose ourselves in everything that it is not us. So we need something to focus on. Now for me, I still hear you. I'm not one of the ones that will zone in and block everything else out. And again, I'm also the kind of person that will stay home all day, sometimes for a few days in a row, to find myself. So it's up to you to decide which one is a better coping mechanism. You know, but I need to look at my tablet. Books don't really work because you have to pay attention to the language in the books, but the tablet is great because I can use Sudoku or a jigsaw puzzle, or I can draw. And here's the thing, because I'm looking at this drawing or this tablet, I'm not seeing the flash of light. The small child that ran through my peripheral is in my peripheral. <coughs> And I'm looking down, so it's even further in my peripheral. Whereas before, if I was looking at you, that small child running through my peripheral would have... Hair again. Would have distracted me. I would have been like, eh. Now when you're speaking sign language, that's bad. Because you have to look at them and they get offended if you don't. But I am sorry. I get distracted. Easily. Because my brain prioritizes things differently. I don't know... I don't know, I don't know why. Anyway, so because I'm looking at the tablet with the drawing, it's easier 
for me to block out extraneous things, like the smell of coffee takes longer to get through to my brain. Eventually it will percolate, pun intended, but it won't be an immediate, hey, pay attention to this now. Uh, I won't see the, the person taking a selfie with the flash off in the back of the room. Whereas if I was looking at you, that would have been right behind you and whoop, that split second of me looking at the flash, I may miss one or two words. So if I'm looking at my tablet, I actually hear you better. If I'm drawing, I actually hear you better because smells and sounds I don't know if you heard that, but I heard that. It was a big honking truck that just went past. As disruptive as that is to normal conversation, a small child crying halfway across the street, or halfway down the street, will have the same effect on me as a big honking truck going right by your ear. And we are at 21 minutes, so I'm going to cut this off here. Sorry I went on a bit of a rant, um, but you know, it's not that we don't care, it's not that we're not listening, it's just the way we're wired. Sometimes, like the article said, we need to find somewhere to center ourselves, find, remember who we are, get our own <laughs> accents back, or lack thereof, just be us for a while, not have to worry about did I read all of the signals correctly? Did I misinterpret anything? Did any words get dropped? So, if we need some time to just chillax, it's not you. It, it really is us. It's really, it's not you, it's us. We need to find ourselves again. And we will communicate better when we come back than we would if, if we'd stayed, you know, going out or whatever, which probably why I never was able to hold down a job. Because, yeah, anyway, thanks for tolerating 22, almost 23 minutes of this. It'll be 23 by the time I'm done. Hopefully, the, if, you, if, you, if you know or love someone who's autistic, this helped. If you are autistic, hopefully this helped. I was diagnosed late in life, so I'm still figuring out what it means to be autistic. And if that's you too, all I can do is hope that this helped.